G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here. In today's video, we're gonna unveil a brand new project for the channel. Now, the title and the thumbnail of this one is not misleading. I've done my ass in on this car. We've lost a ton of money and it's much, much worse than I thought. I'm in a bit better mood today. I actually filmed the whole episode yesterday, but I was feeling very flat and down about the whole situation. So I scrapped that and I started again. There's been heaps of work done in the background, mainly just cleaning things, but we'll go take a look at the car in just a moment. Yes, we swapped the VL wagon, Turbo Immaculate Restoration for a 1996 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 4 which is actually my personal favorite model. Uh, it is the one that people like the least of all of them. I'm that kind of guy. I like Civic sedans, I like R33 Skylines, and I like Evo 4s. I tend to like things that are close to or similar to what everyone else likes, but not quite exactly the same. I like to do my own thing, put a bit of a TT twist on it, and make it my own. So. Without further ado, let's go take a look at the car in all of its glory. So we're gonna switch over to voiceover mode. And on camera, this car looks immaculate. In photos, it looks immaculate. The wheels and tires look fantastic. But I can assure you, in real life, it is quite rough. There's swirl marks in the paint, there's crow's feet in the paint, there's fading, there's bad file marks where it's been crow's foot or crow's feet in the paint and actually these tires which is the real disappointment they're pretty much brand new we're going to ditch those for some zestinos because they have a ton of holes in them there's nails in almost every tire around to the back of the car we've got the full body kit we've got the reflectors we've got the sick wing and we've got this really poxy badge that's missing half of its letters we're going to peel that off now uh, we'll get a new one of these. And I actually went to the Wreckers today and I found a set of immaculate tail lights. The great thing about the Evo 4, a lot of standard Lancer parts do work out. We need to get some trim bits for the wipers. Somebody's glued in the weather strips. And just overall, the car needs a tidy up everywhere around the whole car. Um, the bonnet's been painted at some stage and it looks pretty new. It actually looks almost immaculate on the bonnet, which is the alloy bonnet. If you're familiar with Evos, they have an alloy bonnet and they also have alloy guards. Now we'll dip to some of yesterday's footage where we get the car up on the hoist and we go right through everything. And let me tell you, it's pretty disappointing. Uh, I'll mix some of that in now but the car is all totally clean. The seats are back in it. Everything's all good. We've gotten the sludge out of all the seats and the interior now is looking pretty immaculate. So it's all complete, nice and dried SR3 Recaros. We are gonna get some wings from the boys at OTR. But you go check out what I did yesterday. I'm gonna get set up, we're gonna take it for a drive, see what she sounds like, see what she goes like. And uh, before we take it off the road and overhaul this thing, it's probably gonna sit for a little while whilst I collect part. Uh, and I haven't forgotten, we've got VTEG. We need to finish VTEG, we're waiting on pistons and rods for this guy, and then we can get that done. And whilst that's getting done, it should give me enough time to get a whole bunch of parts so we can smash that all out in one go. Uh, it's gonna be powder coated suspension, zinc plated bolts, all new bushes, all new brakes, all new suspension, brand new clutch. We're gonna get the hookup from Exidy. We are gonna get the hookup from Zestino tires, and of course, we're gonna get the hookup from Raceworks with a whole setup on the car. Can't wait for that. Yeah, we're gonna get parts from everywhere, accumulate them all, and then do a sick build for you guys. And now, a real quick word from this video sponsor, me. As you guys know, we have the Spool Up website. We've just added these mighty D stickers for all your D-Series vehicles. And we've also added new Spool Up logos.
These bad boys are mega reflective. And lastly, K is the way for all you K series enthusiasts or K swap kings. These are all available on the Spool Up website. Link will be in the description. And this is high quality film said to last five to seven years outside in the sun. So check them out. And don't forget, we've got the GT3582 Turbo. Every $5 you spend on the website until Halloween time gets you one entry into winning that GT3582 Turbo from Max Peating Rods, valued at 400 bucks. Check it out, link in the description. Now, this at first glance looks amazing. I, I'm really happy with the car but I'm really unhappy with quite a few things on it which we're gonna fix. They should be fairly easy to fix, but let's have a look over it. We've got some genuine Mitsubishi Enkis that have been powder coated white to match the car. Normally not a fan of white on white wheels, but this actually looks pretty cool. The full factory Evo body kit. We're missing the Mitsubishi logo just here, which we'll get eventually. The paint on the back half of the car is fairly dull. We're gonna try and go down to Autobahn and grab some products to give this thing a nice paint clean and correction. But I really think it's probably beyond repair. Um, there are a lot of file marks in the paint. It looks like somebody's tried to cut and buff it, but they've used rocks instead of um, a buffing pad. That is not the best. You can probably see it here. Hard to pick up on camera. They're gonna get swapped out for some Zestino tires. As you guys know, we run Zestino on all the cars on the channel here, so we'll swap those out. They do have a slow leak, so once we chuck it up on the hoist and find out if there is punctures in the tires or if they've just been sitting in storage for a long time. In the interior, we've got the factory Recaro trim with the really cool 1996 Recaro SR3 Evo textured um, trim in here and I think that looks awesome. However, when we get to the front of the car, you'll see that it's missing the trim there. So if anyone has any Evo 4 front door cards, let me know, we need to replace that. The front seat is looking a little bit munted there. Um, that's typical wear and tear from people jumping in and out. And we've got a small rip there in the front bolster, but otherwise she's all there. Momo steering wheel, Japanese JDM 180 kilometer an hour dash, climate control, and it's a five speed. Let's check out the thing you guys are all interested in is the engine and what's done to it. Now, one thing about the Evos is the bonnet is all aluminium or aluminum if you're from America. And I'm told so are the front guards. Uh, they feel a little bit different to the front doors. And you can see here, we've got the JDM orange indicators, which I love. Mitsubishi grill is present in the front and we've got the fog lights. Now I do want to upgrade all the light globes in here. They're really, really dull 90s globes. The front fog lights pretty much do absolutely nothing and the front headlights are pretty weak themselves. I do want to upgrade the front mount to just a bigger one. This one all being a factory Evo, we will keep and wrap that up in cardboard and bubble wrap and put it on the shelf. Anything we take off this car for mods is gonna stay in storage. If we ever decide to sell it, we'll sell it with all the genuine parts. Let's take a look under the hood. Here is the 4G63 engine, two liter, turbocharged, all wheel drive, factory Evo motor. I don't actually know if this has been tuned or not. There is an adjustable eBay looking fuel pressure regulator. That is going in the bin 100%. There is a throttle body there that's aftermarket. I probably wanna chuck that in the bin because you can see down here, we've got some dodginess with the TPS wiring and we've got some EGR stuff going on down there. And I've been talking to my friends at Spartan Turbos about doing a high flow upgrade for these. And we're gonna look at doing that in the near future. Exity clutch is on board. We're gonna do an upgraded clutch on this car. So there's gonna be more about that in the future. A new air intake, new Raceworks injectors, Raceworks fuel pressure reg, all Raceworks lines, BMC filter. And I wanna get an Optima battery in there. Pretty quick smart. This one is really, really weak. There is an issue with the idle control as well. All of these lines are quite perished. 
We do need to upgrade the radiator and of course a full turbo back exhaust. This one's all standard, so we're gonna get rid of all of that, clean everything up, zinc plate all the nuts and bolts, powder coat things, and also paint things. So we're gonna get this thing looking really, really nice. And the goal with the car is roughly around about 250 kilowatts at the wheels, nice tough streeter, something to take to all the car meets. Stancy boy, hard park. We're gonna get some coilovers in this cause it's factory suspension just with some lowered springs and I need to roll the guards front and rear. Under full load turning, it does scrub on the tires and we definitely want to avoid that, but I do want it to be just a pinch lower. Probably leave the front where it is, but drop the back about 30 mil, I reckon. It would be nice. Uh, I've looked under the car on my hands and knees, but I haven't had it up on the hoist. I'm gonna do that, check it out with you guys. I'm gonna take the seats out, give them a good clean with the Bissell spot cleaner do wet vac on all the seats and lay them out in the sun today. Hopefully that brings them up brand new. There is a bit of a stink in the car because it has been in storage for quite a while. Let's get her up in the air and have a look at the undercarriage. All right, she's up in the air. I've had a really, really brief look and got really scared. So I ran over and grabbed the camera and um, she's not looking good guys. Not looking good at all. I'm pretty disappointed actually. We will start at the back. I reckon. So every time you start up the car, there's a piece loose inside here and it rattles. So that's got to go in the bin. Quite possibly the world's worst welds on this exhaust. That doesn't line up. It's rusty as all get out. It's a, got a hole in it there. Wow, I didn't even know that. So massive hole in the exhaust. Jesus. Um, Oh my God, that is way worse than I thought. We've got some light surface rust up here, so I'm gonna blast everything, treat it, and then I'm going to wrap the line, the whole underside of the car. All of this suspension is gonna get swapped out. Uh, I'm gonna sandblast off all of this horrible silver paint, and we're gonna clean up everything. Everything that's alloy, I'm gonna clean it and then clear coat it. Everything that's not alloy, that's cast, I'm gonna paint it black. I'm gonna get all the bolts zinc coated, um, clean up and service the drive shafts, all the diff bushes. So all of these mounts we're gonna do. This horrible rubbery silver paint that's on here, that's all gotta go. Shocks are gonna go. They don't appear to be leaking, but they're crusty and they're stock. Uh, under the middle of the floor doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a few little bends on the pinch welds, which I'll straighten out. That exhaust is bloody horrible. Whoever made that, give yourself an uppercut. Uh, the center bearings, they don't vibrate when you're driving the car, but probably want to change those out. Give the tail shaft a clean and paint. Let's basically service that. We've got something on here, which is probably diff oil by the looks of it. So we'll need to clean that up. The front arms, I believe, are cast alloy from factory. So we'll have to get those cleaned up and painted. And we'll re be replacing all of these bushes, all the gaskets and seals. It's gonna be a big job. I'll get this powder coated, which is the subframe um, and new intercooler pipes. Factory intercooler has a little bit of a munt going on there. So we'll get that swapped out for a bigger one. We'll swap out all of these um, clutch masters and everything with Protex ones. A little bit of a melted um, inner guard liner here. That is not good. The brakes all look all right, and they do feel all right when you're driving. They will be upgraded. I do want to put some Brembo's or some AP Racing brakes on there eventually, but we might, might just do a little Protex upgrade in the meantime. The first thing I always do when I get a new project is um, I pressure wash and clean underneath the car. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully most of this silver just blasts off. I'm gonna spray a ton of degreaser on there and hope that that helps. Look, I'm pretty disappointed in the couple of things I found, but at the same time, I did know what I was getting myself into. 
And I did know all of this before I decided on the swap, but yeah, I didn't know about the diff leaking. I didn't know about the hole in the exhaust. I just looked under, checked the frame rails, checked all of this silver stuff. I went, no, I'm gonna replace all that. Checked the exhaust, went, ah, it's rusty. I'm gonna replace that. Didn't realize there was a massive hole in here. That's actually pretty funny, but we'll look at getting an off the shelf exhaust for it. There is a nail in the tire, which probably explains why it's, but that can be repaired. There's another one there. It looks like there was one there. There's another one there. This tire, and there's another one. This tire is cooked. Okay, so brand new hand cooks, still with all the furry bits on them. Need to go in the bin. Bit of rust up there in the frame. That's no big deal. Oh, I can cut that out, weld a plate in there. Not an issue at all. Not worried about that. A little bit on this side, um, but I'll probably just, yeah give that a cut or and weld a plate in there. Pretty standard with these actually. I've done a bit of research and they do have their faults. One thing which you're probably thinking is, oh, not an Evo 4. Those ones have the weak engine with the crank walk. Um, so we're already gonna name this one Project Crank Walk because we are gonna address all of those things. I've read up and found out that if it has an issue, it has an issue. If it doesn't, it doesn't. This one is a 96. Late 96, I believe, so I'm pretty sure that issue is fixed, but we'll probably throw some bearings in the car anyway. We'll check out the story with the thrust bearing and see how that play is, and we'll get that all measured up and yeah, fix that up. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. So it's been about an hour, hour and a half since I picked the camera up last, and I've cleaned the two front seats. Passenger side turned out all right uh, in the sunlight. It's had probably 40 minutes to dry, whereas the driver's side, which was the much worse one, um, just went out. But I thought I'd better show you what I've been doing. So I've got the wet vac here, soak everything down, scrub it with the uh, oscillating scrubber brush on the drill, agitate everything up, and then suck all the crummy stuff out. It's gonna be interesting when I tip that out because it's these seats were absolutely filthy. You can see a bit of moldy stuff there and uh, heaps of dog hair in the car. All the seats are clean, carpets are cleaned. And this is the bit that you guys really want to see, I know, is the mud milkshake. Yeah. Look in there, gross. So there's actually a story behind this car. That's Japanese butt sweat and South African butt sweat and Australian butt sweat. So this car has literally been rallied around the world. Alrighty everyone, the underside of the car is clean. I've cleaned it, I've scrubbed it with a brush which I bought from Bunnings. And uh, we've now got white inner guards and a white floor. Looks much better under here for the most part, but I've got no idea what's going on back here. We've got a partially red and silver painted exhaust with a massive hole in it. We've got a partially painted red and silver spare tire well. They've painted silver over this, silver over a red sway bar, which looks like it was originally black. Same with the shocks, they were painted red then silver. Just so many questions about this car. The damage underneath this car is much worse than I thought. I found another problem. I know I can fix it. It's just a pain in the butt. And yeah, I was not expecting it. I'll show you that in just a moment. Under the front of the car, the engine, the important part, uh, all that oil's now cleaned away from here. I do know that I'm gonna need to reseal up this transfer case, whether it's just seals over here or seals here, or whether there's a gasket or something leaking out of there. I won't know that until I pull the whole engine apart. Um, we're gonna need a bunch of ball joints. All of these boots are all split. Gonna need to track down an inner guard liner or make one because I don't wanna lose this really awesome factory brake ducting system that they've got, which sucks air in from here and then shoots it out there into the braking area, which is a pretty cool feature. All true performance cars like all the M3s, Evos, 
GTRs. They all have built-in brake cooling ducts, which I think is an awesome little feature, a little Easter egg, but just shows that they are homologated for the racetrack or the rally track, but they keep most of the same things in the cars when they sell them to the public. Okay, so this is the bit that I said was really bad. Um, I just put some duct tape over it while I pressure washed under the car. I didn't want to get in full of water. Somebody in their brilliant geniusness needed to probably remove this for some reason. And they've just hacked at this with some tin snips and it's ripped up on the floor. Now, it's not the end of the world. I'm hoping that regular lancers have the same shape here in the floor. I'm gonna to go to the wreckers tomorrow. And if I can find one, I'll just cut out the section in a big square. And then I'll trace that around here and then I'll tack weld it in. Spot welds all the way around. And um, yeah, that should be a good fix. I'll seal it up with some seam sealer and it should be good as new. Yeah, the, the actual carpet looked pretty good. So I'll just put, give it a good vac and put the um, floor mats over the top. Doesn't need washing at all, just needs a good vac. This is what you guys really want to know, isn't it? How's it go? How's it drive? What's the performance like? So let's give it a few little squirts. Sounds great inside, it's not too loud, and you can definitely hear that HKS blow off valve. I've confirmed it is a real one, so we might keep that. Uh, not that I'm a fanboy for all the JDM parts, I would love to and prefer to put a Turbo Smart or something Australian in there, but we've got this, so we'll keep it for now. It does sound pretty cool, pretty uh, JDM fast and furious y. Now the car does need a service, does need an oil change, but I have checked the oil and water, it is all topped up and it's all good to go, so we can give it a little bit of a squirt to the speed limit. And uh, the first thing that we need to test is an all-wheel drive launch. Now this is getting a new clutch, so not too worried about that. Four thousand four grand launch. Oh. And we lost the dash mat, so definite G force is there. Uh, it goes well. We got to the speed limit pretty quickly. Uh, no smells or slips or anything, so that's not too bad. The drive line of the car, even though it is in need of a really good service it does feel good drives good there's no clanks or rattles a um, little bit of scrubbage around the corners i did roll the guards as i mentioned um, but uh, might need a little bit more in the front or some other clearance not too sure us in fifth gear this is probably the second time I've driven the car so I'm listening out for all sorts of noises and squeaks and rattles things that I need to address in the future can't wait to get an alloy air intake on this and a high flow turbo sound incredible when that happens but can't go past the HKS blow off valve that's for sure one thing that's really really noticeable and really really good is it doesn't smell like wet dog in here anymore uh, the interior cleaned up really really well the carpets were great the seats are now pristine and clean and it smells super fresh in here really happy with the way that turned out as you would have seen by all that goop that came out of the uh, wet vac um, they were filthy but now beautiful and dried in one day so that's excellent me every 
every time I look up in the mirror and I see that big wing and I think there's someone like right up my butt but we've got a ducktail with the spoiler and the little gurney flap on top of that which is so cool you guys have to see it up close to appreciate it the evolution body kit and all the aero on the car is all fully functional and just really awesome really happy with it I'm glad the whole car's complete as well but anyway that's gonna do it for the drive we don't want to break any laws uh, it is a long weekend it's footy grand final weekend so uh, just a quick squirt to the speed limit bit of noise hear the blower valve and also test out the cars suspension for leaks and squeaks everything though checks out fine we know what we've got to fix we know the plan so it's accumulate a bunch of parts and get ready for this build project crank walk is on the way so make sure you guys tune in for all episodes like subscribe there's no evo 4 content out there that's less than 10 years old so we've got some fresh stuff for you and we're going to do some really in-depth builds up close and personal stuff not like Tommy F. Yeah, who just says, here's the car, here's a bunch of parts, cut to weeks later and it's all on there and it's all done. We're going to show you guys how to do it all. You're going to learn with me. So don't forget, spool up, bring the boost and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.